is we're going to do some yoga that cultivates a sense of um, presence um, where we're really thinking less about being up in our heads and we're dropping down into our bodies. So I want you to think really today that it's not about the pose, it's not about how it looks, it's not about the alignment, though there will be some safety alignment issues that I may slightly bring in. It's about how it feels. Um, yoga is about feeling more than we think and really noticing your body and the sensations happening in your body. What I mean by self-regulating your nervous system by presence is when we think too much, we're ruminating, we're stuck inside of our heads. Um, when we think about the past, we're worried about things that we've done wrong. It brings up a sense of worry and shame and sort of about what had happened. Could I have changed things? And when you're thinking about the future, you're anxious about what could happen. When I know that, for example, today, you know, this week going back into work, um, half of the things that I was worried about never happened anyway, you know, and we sort of um, catastrophize, I catastrophize inside of my head. Um, so when we're thinking about now, and I always think about Kung Fu Panda, which is like the favourite one that I use with the children to cultivate the idea of presence, because Master Ogwe, he talks when he, he talks to Kung Fu Panda about the peach tree and he talks about the present being a present because we're in that moment we're not thinking about the past and the future so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to offer some uh, resourcing tools to help you become in this present moment attention little things that you can use and build into your daily life um quick practices as well as well as doing a longer sort of practice which will involve modifications either seated or standing so if you're quite a physical person you might want to do some of the practice standing so let's begin um if you have a chair you may want to arrive and well you're welcome to find your seat you're welcome to find your position feel welcome to find where you would like to place your feet and when we're thinking about our um, postural alignment, here is an option for you. Um, postural alignment is um, helpful in terms of breathing and digestion. When we're slumped, obviously, it can be very, very tiring. It affects the ability for us to digest our food. It also affects quality of breathing. Breathing is so important for our parasympathetic nervous system, our rest, digest and repair. Chronic stress is the opposite. When we're stressed, our chest is tight and we're really working on optimal breathing here to really relax and really de-stress the body. So you might want to, as an option, lift through the crown of the head and you may want to lengthen through the spine, lifting through the hips. You may want to relax your shoulders all the way down your back. It may be an option to place your hands maybe on your thighs, nicely, gently resting. So there is a kind of dignity and poise maybe in your posture, but there's also at the same time a sense of softness. So you're not feeling rigid or tight. Lovely. OK, excellent. So let's work a little bit on resourcing tools. So I want you to think about your self-care plan. A self-care plan helps to anchor you into the now and the present moment. So, for example, you may have, at times of stress or worry, you may have something to fidget or hold, something physical that you can play with. I have a stone, fidget spinners, for example, anything, um, a stress toy is a very, very useful thing. So what I mean is you can anchor yourself in the present by focusing on your five senses. So the first one is touch, an item that you can hold or play with. Secondly, music, a playlist. I have playlists that I enjoy or gentle nature sounds, for example, that I have on my Spotify playlists. Um, your favourite songs that can enliven you, remind you of a favourite memory, for example. Um, also as well, it may be a favourite scent that you can place on a tissue and you can tuck into your sleeve, you can pull out. Um, also as well, you might want to think about um, collecting favourite pictures or poems or photographs that help you connect your heart with your mind. These are emotional things that help you to feel grounded and help you to feel safe. As an English teacher, I have lots and lots of positive quotations from 
famous people and gurus and even daft people, you know, like David Bowie. It doesn't really matter as long as they help you to connect with a sense of empowerment and how and making you feel good about yourself. Maybe it's Frida Kahlo, maybe it's Malcolm X. It could be anybody. And photographs of people that I love, pets and um, obviously um, past animals that I had in my childhood, my family, really important. And poems are so enlivening and they can be really, really helpful in times where you need to draw from the strength of that in terms of what it offers you, in terms of messages. Um, another thing that I like to think about is that really, really helpful as a toolkit for your well-being is um, find a space in your house that nobody can come into. It's very difficult, isn't it? I know as being a parent, you know, the only time I could ever get five minutes away from the kids was basically sat on the toilet having a wee. And I know that sounds crazy, but if you've got a space that you make it special to yourself, um, my daughter, my daughter-in-law, who is um, Chinese and Buddhist, she has a little space and she has a little altar. She's got her favourite pictures, her favourite icons. She's got flowers there. She's got things that really help her to feel positive and empower. And also it's um, somewhere where you can go to, where you can practice some of the stuff that we do together today. So let's try some little bit of techniques then before we start our kind of like our full practice. So I just want to invite you to um, bring your hands together. And I just want you to rub your hands together as a little bit of a resource tool to help you get into this present moment because you're really focusing on the sensation of your hands rubbing together. And you might want to focus on any, maybe you might notice any movement in your arms. You may notice friction. And you may notice warmth. So as we're moving out of our heads and into our bodies, we can get away from that rumination that gets us stuck in negative self-thought. And maybe you might want to try a little bit of cupping. So cupping, you might want to place the warm hands maybe on your eyes and focus on the sensation of touch. Maybe you've got the heel of your palm on your um on your actual face with the fingers over your eyes. So you're covering your eyes and you're feeling the warmth and you may be noticing the darkness there. Maybe you might want to slowly bring your fingers and open and wide so you notice the light coming in. And then maybe you want to start a little bit of tapping. So tapping is all about noticing where your boundaries are in your body so you have a sense of presence and physicality. When we're stressed, we kind of disassociate and we feel spacey. So you could start with a little bit of a pitter patter on the top of your head as if there's like, you know, when you was a child, you know, you're pretending that it would rain on your head, a little bit of like pitter patter with your fingers and then just tapping your forehead, just nice and gently around your forehead around your cheekbones a little bit, around your jaw and then maybe a little bit around kind of like the top of your upper chest. You might want to note that and then you might want to make gentle fists so thumbs inside and you might want to just tap your boundaries. So tapping your boundaries is knowing where your um, what a really important part of self-care is you know, your physical boundaries, not just your metaphorical boundaries, your boundaries with yourself and other people. Um, I've always found with my chronic fatigue that I've had in the past that I was always far too much, and I think it's a gender thing, I'm much too much of a people pleaser. And I put my myself last rather than first. So boundaries are important. So you might want to just tap gently and nicely up and down the edges, down maybe down the side of your body. Maybe just where your kidneys are, where your adrenal glands is, where that stress hormone comes from. And if you feel comfortable about doing that, you can maybe do it standing or if you feel it available to you, if you can bend over, you might want to tap down the sides of your legs. And then tap all the way back up. And I always, when I'm really sort of spaced out and when I'm really, really stressed and I'm feeling disassociated, I do this as long as until I start to inhabit and feel embodied and just get back into my body where I know where I am. And then you might want to repeat coming all the way back up, gently tapping your face. Now that's really one way of doing things. Another one that I like to do is a self hug. Okay, so when you think about oxytocin and endorphins, the really good, feel good hormones, 
that really get rid of the cortisol and the adrenaline that associate with stress. Self-hugging is nice. So you might want to hug yourself and wrap your arms in and just focus on that sensation of self-hug. So that's another option that you might want to do as well. And we're going to experiment a little bit with compassionate self-hug and touch when we're struggling sometimes. I do this a lot. I have a really important, you know, I think a really important sort of, my favourite one is my fist here over my heart and my hand over the top. It's a kind of empowering sort of like boundary pose. It's about me holding my space, me putting myself first. Maybe we want to experiment with this kind of self-hug and compassionate self-touch when we're struggling to release these feel-good hormones. Maybe we might put one hand on our heart. Maybe that may, may feel nice. You might want to notice how that feels. Or maybe you might want to put two hands. So maybe decide which one's the best one for you for self-hugging, self-touch, to release the positive hormones, the feel-good ones. So you might hug, you may have one hand on the heart, you may have two hands over your heart. And maybe you might have a fist and your hand over the top that makes you to feel empowered and strong. Draw that personal strength into yourself. Or maybe you might want to try maybe one hand on the heart and maybe one hand on the belly. Sometimes putting a hand on the belly can be a challenge. We feel sometimes we don't have a positive experience of how we feel about our own bellies. Sometimes for me, I just think, oh, you know, spill a bit, love the belly, love it. And, but sometimes we feel like we don't like our bellies. So maybe that might not be one for you. Another one is you might want to gently cross your arms over the top and just stroke as if you're self-soothing. So stroking one hand and then the other up and down with your arms crossed. That's another option. So we're just thinking about resourcing tools to get ourselves into the present, really focusing on sensation, focusing on touch. Touch is so important, especially now at the moment, where a lot of us are social distancing and we're losing that sense of the positive hormones we get from hugging. So if you've got an animal, you've got a, if you've got somebody who's in your bubble, it's really good to hug other people. It really is good for your well-being. So as we come back to our seat, arriving into our position, maybe lengthening through the crown of our head, another way to tap into our five senses, which helps us to really get out of that fight or flight nervous system in our brain, we're going to tell our brain that we're safe. Telling our brain that we're safe is a little bit like a dog coming into a room and meeting new people for the first time. It will check every corner of that room to know that place is safe. So you may want to listen to sounds. You may want to soften your jaw and face at the same time. You might want to notice sounds outside of your room. You might notice sounds inside of or outside of your room. You might notice the sound of my voice. At the same time, if you can, maybe you might notice the contact between whatever is holding and supporting you, that grounded sense of pushing down, noticing maybe your feet against the floor. Maybe noticing your seat, your position of your hands. Maybe you notice the attention of your hands, maybe the texture of your hands against the material on the tops of your upper legs. You might notice the contours of your fingers. You might notice the space between your fingers. And maybe you might want to imagine that there are kind of connecting yourself to the ground, that there are roots growing through your feet. Grounding helps you to get out of your spacey head into your body. So you know that whatever is going on, you are hold, held and supported. Now, as you're feeling the contact between whatever is holding and supporting, you're listening for sounds, tickle the palate of your tongue. To, to, sorry, tickle your palate with your tongue, sorry. Now that stimulates the taste set receptors. It also stimulates your brain. A little bit of a trick there. If you're driving late at night, it energises the brain. So if you haven't got anything to hand, such as gum or something to taste, you can tickle your palate. 
So we're working on the senses. And so tickle your palate, feel the floor, feel the weights beneath you, feel underneath your body, listen for sounds, and maybe look around the room. So you might want to notice. I always like to tr tell my brain, your brain, even though you think you're safe, your brain is looking or constantly for danger. It's hardwired, you know, from our ancient ancestors. So you might want to know where the doors are, the windows are. You might want to look at, be curious about the shape and the colours of light, pick a colour. You might pick five things that are green, for example. So when you're having a little bit of a stressful moment, maybe anxiety, you can do this practice of using the five senses. You're looking at your external environment to tell yourself you're safe before we start to tune into our physical body a lot more. as so we come in. Fantastic. So moving on now, so you might want to come back to your centre. You may want to lift through that crown of the head. You may want to arrive and you may want to check in with your body. So checking in with your body. We're not looking for any reasons why we feel any way physically or how we feel emotionally or how we feel um, mentally. So we're not looking for reason why, we're just practicing a kind of curious, non-judgmental attention. So if anything comes up that's challenging, name it to tame it. So imagine that your mind is like a car. You might want to notice how fast your mind is going today. Is it idle? Stalled? Is it stopped? Is it 30 miles an hour? Is it 70 miles an hour? Just notice, not looking for any reasons why. And then on an emotional level, whether you're feeling sad or bored or curious or tired, just maybe think of an emoji perhaps that defines how you're feeling today and just let it go. When we practice mindfulness, we allow things to come into our field of awareness. We notice. So it's more challenging to push away emotions it's we notice them as if we're looking at a river, but we're not in the river. We're not we're like a third person objective to the experience that's going on. So you are not your thoughts, you are not your emotions. And maybe you might want to check in with your body and bring the spotlight to attention. You may notice, so you might want to imagine that you're in, it's a long time now, in that scanner at the airport, you might want to notice. So you're slowly coming down and noticing for the areas of tension. Now, we feel more, we notice emotions and stress in our body before our brain reacts. And in fact, a lot of stress actually settles into the body because we're not moving it out. So think of the word emotion. With yoga, we're moving those emotions out. We're not allowing them to be trapped. So you might want to start with your head and slowly work your way down and notice there's any areas of tension we're not looking for reasons why, we're just being curious, we're just noticing. And as you slowly work your way down towards your upper torso and then your lower torso, noticing any areas of tension or tightness. You might be working down your arms towards your fingers maybe. You may be coming back to your torso and working down from your upper legs down towards your knees. Noticing any sensations down towards your feet. And then as you come back, try to take in the whole visual feel, the emotional kind of sense of tension in your full body. And you might want to bring your spotlight of attention to whatever you feel the most. Where is it? Just notice it, name it to tame it and just let it go. It's all about noticing but not getting involved. And then we're going to set a little bit of an intention for this practice today. So whatever you're feeling, we're going to flip the script. So if you're feeling tense, I want you to repeat a short positive statement in the present tense that is the opposite of that. So if you're feeling tense, you can say instead that I am feeling calm. And you can repeat that a few times. And then when you've repeated it three times, just let it go. Okay. 
and then let's work on moving the body now when you feel ready and when that's available to you you may want to when you're ready interlace your fingers like so okay and when you're ready you may want to flip your grip so that your palm is facing outwards so you've got one option here so if bending or moving from the hip crease or the waist is a challenge you can stay with the straight spine that's up to you everything has a choice remember those everything's an option it's all about how you feel not how it looks so lengthen out your arms if that feels available to you you might want to straighten your arms and take the palms interlaced palms away from you you might notice sensation in the upper body so that's one option another option is you might want to drop your ears so that they are parallel with your upper arms and round your spine maybe maybe that's available to you pushing your palms away for you that's one option so you've got one option to stay straight another option to curve your spine and push your hands away another option if that feels available to you is you might want to lift and lengthen and shine your palms up towards the ceiling if that's available to you you might notice sensation you might notice sensation in your arms maybe in your armpits you might notice sensation as your spine lifts towards the ceiling so we're waking up the spine waking up the shoulders maybe you might want to feel relax those shoulder blades so you're not hunching your shoulders up towards your ears which is a sign of tension and then when you feel ready you can release your arms very slowly you might want to add your breath here on the exhale and bring your arms all the way down and release lovely so when you're ready when that feels available to you you might want to take your arms up and wide maybe you might want to bring it together with breath so breath and movement maybe on the inhale you might want to take your arms wide 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 reaching maybe all the way up to the ceiling if that's available to you and maybe you want to wiggle your fingers reaching wide fingers wide maybe wiggle those fingers lengthening maybe through the crown of the head maybe lengthening through the spine maybe allowing your shoulders to relax down gliding down your back energizing so we are hardwired to reach it comes from our ancestors when we were you know when we were monkeys reaching for the food reaching for reaching into the branches into the trees and then when you feel ready slowly maybe with your breath at the same time on the exhale bring your hands down and whilst we hold a lot of tension in our shoulders and our neck it's the first place we know it because we are using our secondary muscles to breathe when we're tense we breathe more with our shoulders and with our ribs than with our belly so maybe you want to notice where your breathing is today you might want to imagine that there is a balloon behind your belly button and maybe you want to have this area to inflate and to as you slowly breathe out maybe allow the breath to bring the belly button towards the spine so inhaling and this may be the background to your practice so let's see if we can maybe you might want to allow your breath to go with some shoulder rolls maybe that's one movement so maybe as you inhale and roll your shoulders up towards your ears and maybe you might on the exhale bring your shoulders down so tension in the upper body in the shoulders here is very very tiring very very tiring and it's the first place we notice stress in our body in our neck in our shoulders in between our shoulder blades so maybe on the inhale you roll your shoulders up and on the exhale roll your shoulders down maybe you might notice some sensations here maybe not and how big you make these rolls how big you make your circles is entirely up to you maybe you might want to go slow maybe you might want to go fast and maybe when you're ready you might want to come to the center 
So we're going to try a little bit of a breath today. So if this one's challenging for you or you don't feel up to it today, you've got the option. We're going to see if we can move out the emotions. So we've got two options. The first option to release tension in the upper body is on the inhale. Maybe you want to squeeze your shoulders up to your ears and then sigh out with a ha as you drop your shoulders. That's one option. Another option if that's available to you, is on the inhale, take your arms up towards the ceiling. Maybe on the exhale, bring your hands directly in front of you. Okay, on the exhale. Then on the inhale, maybe take your arms wide. And then on the inhale, take your arms up, maybe. And then on the exhale, as if you're throwing all the stress behind you, ha, as you bring your chest towards your thighs. So that's one option. Shrugs maybe on the inhale and release. Or maybe you want to do this stress relieving breath with me. Off we go. When you're ready, inhale, arms up. Okay, exhale down maybe. Inhale wide. Inhale up. And then ha. And slowly roll up so we don't get dizzy. Coming back to centre when that's available to you. In your own time, shoulder tension or inhale up. Exhale, maybe. Maybe inhale wide. Inhale up. And ha! Imagine you've got massive bags of worries like shopping that you've just come back from Tesco's and you're just letting them all go as you drop on that exhale. So shoulder struggle on the inhale, maybe, and exhale it down or inhale up. Maybe exhale, hands in front, inhale, maybe, and ha. Let's maybe try that one more time if that's available to you. Inhale, exhale, maybe, inhale wide, inhale up, and ha. And slowly, slowly roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time, nice and slowly, head last so we don't feel dizzy. And then coming back to centre when that's available to you. So you might want to check in and notice how you're feeling. Notice any sensations or changes. You might notice your heart breathing maybe. You might notice a change in your breath. So we've got two options here to move stuck emotions in our body. Now fight or flight, adrenaline builds up in our body. We need to release it because it causes chronic stress. Chronic stress leads to chronic health issues. So I know when I'm stressed, arthritis kicks in. Two options here, seated position, we can do some nice swinging twists. Now, if swinging twists are not available to you, that's one option, you might want to just shake. So, nice little bit of Taylor Swift, get some nice of your favourite music on. Best way to look after your well-being is just to dance when nobody can watch. So, you've got two options. So, you might want to do this standing or seated. So, if you're doing it standing... You might want to take your legs wide, knees soft. Imagine that your spine is like um, a metal rod. And you might want to swing your arms softly around the body. And you're noticing maybe a little bit of a bounce in the heels. You can do this seated as well. And you might want to notice any physical sensations that arise maybe as you do this. Or the other option is you might want to shake. So you might want to start with your hands. You might be standing or you might be seated. If you're standing, maybe soft knees and then allow your fingers and the shaking to travel up to your arms, maybe. Allow it to travel up to your shoulders. And then maybe add your head if that feels available to you. And then maybe you might want to really take it further. You might want to add your legs, lifting your legs. So you're either swinging, twist or shaking. So if you're going to feel a little bit dizzy, just take that pace maybe a little bit slower if that's available to you. And just notice how the body feels. You might notice your feet on the floor. You may notice some tension in the front of the top of the legs. You may notice some sensation in the shoulders and the head. And then when you feel ready and that's available to you, you might come back to your centre position, whether standing or seated. 
And you might want to just check in to notice any physical sensations, maybe coming back to a sense of stillness, if that's available to you. Just notice how that feels, checking in. You might notice your breath, you might notice your heartbeat, you might notice your feet or whatever is holding and supporting you at this present moment. And when you feel available and when that's ready for you, you might want to try a little bit of an open chest stretch maybe to release this tension here in the upper body. So one option, first option that's available to you, is you might want to take your arms wide or and cross one arm over the other. So maybe you're tall through the crown of your head and your spine is lifted maybe. Maybe you cross your arms one on top of the other and maybe you might feel as though you can get your fingers a little bit around where you can feel your shoulder blades. So that's one option. Maybe on the inhale, you might want to lift your elbows up towards the ceiling. Maybe you might notice sensations across the back. So this large trapezoid muscle, which holds your head up all day, is taking a lot of tension. So maybe this is a nice way to release that tension in your eagle hug. And when you're ready, you might want to change it the opposite way around. You maybe want to open your arms wide on the inhale and then exhale cross in the opposite direction. Maybe feeling your fingers around the back of your shoulders. Maybe on the inhale, you don't have to time it with your breath. You can always lift your elbows as high as they feel they want to go. Maybe you notice that stretch across the shoulder blades or maybe not. And then when you're ready, release maybe, just shrug out, roll out the shoulders. So maybe you might want to try something else that maybe allows you to move this emotion and energy through their body, this trapped emotion that we feel. So we're gonna do something called fists of fire, okay? You've got an option to do this standing or seated. So fists of fire, if you're going to do it standing, okay, you are taking, so I'm going to have my left foot forward and my right leg back and my hips are square to the front and I'm sinking my front left knee over my ankle and I'm balancing on the ball of the back foot. Maybe you feel as though you can get your shoulders to go over your hips, okay? and hug your arms again, maybe that be one for you, okay? And what we're gonna do, maybe, I'm gonna show you the seated version. This is your inhale, maybe, and maybe on the exhale, you might wanna go, take your fists and go, ha, as you pull back your arms, maybe, and straighten that front leg. But if you want to try this seated, that's one option. So if you're trying it seated, so you're using the chair, you're bringing your left, maybe place your left thigh, okay, like so. You can either have blocks maybe underneath your knee here, and you're facing the side, okay. So that's one option. Standing or seated, maybe you don't have blocks, and you might want to just take your foot back behind you like so, squaring off towards the front. So one option, so let's see what happens here. So when you're ready, come into your position, your standing position or seated position, whichever you've chosen. You may want to take your arms and cross them. Be mindful of the back of the chair here as you bring your fists of fire back. So maybe you want to cross your arms here. Maybe you want to lengthen to the crown of your head. Nice tall spine. Maybe you want to connect with your sense of personal power and agency, lifting your lower abs up towards the ceiling. So you might notice maybe a lengthening down the back of the spine. So maybe here on your inhale when you're ready, and then on the exhale, take your fists back. Okay, and then when you're ready, bring them back towards the front in your hug. So in your own time, Inhale maybe here with a, with your hug and exhale. Ha. Inhale maybe here and then ha. 
So yeah, I'm gonna do it standing. Inhale. <laughs> okay, inhale. And you might feel embarrassed about it, so you can always say it inside of your head if you want. Inhale. 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 And then release. So coming back towards your centre position, maybe you want to come back to your chair. And maybe you want to come to a standing position. Just check in and notice. Notice any sensations. Notice the feet on, your fl on the floor, maybe. Notice your heartbeat, maybe. Maybe notice the change in the quality of your breathing. Now, another option here in between where we move to the opposite side is maybe you want to try to do a really nice balancing position, maybe. You've got many options for this, okay? So one option, we've done this before, tree. Tree is a really good posture maybe to help you to feel grounded, to make you help, maybe help you feel more resilient, to make you feel as though that you can rise towards certain challenges in a metaphorical sense. So one option here is you can take your hand on the back of the chair and grounding down into that standing leg, maybe you want to place your knee here on the chair with your foot inside of the standing leg so that's one option here one option here another option maybe you may want to try it standing away from the chair or maybe even your hand off the chair so you can go ankle to heel and below the knee okay lifting through the crown of the head maybe lifting your lower abs maybe up towards your head maybe lengthening the back of the spine Imagining that you have these roots going all the way down through your feet. Maybe you might want to try it seated. So balance, looking at a spot on the floor, helping you to orientate. Maybe you want to do it seated. So coming to the front edge of your chair, maybe. Placing your ankle on the top of the thigh, maybe. And maybe seeing... You may, you may be okay, maybe this is one option here, or maybe you might want to bend that bottom leg. So wherever you are in your tree, maybe you want to think of your hand position. Maybe you want to experiment with your compassionate touch again. Maybe you want to vogue. Maybe you want to be a bit more RuPaul here. You know, get those arms out. Really feel that extension and that power. So sometimes when we feel really down, it's good to feel grounded, but it feels really, really heavy. So maybe you want to feel that lightness and that extension, that kind of sense of hope and empowerment as you raise maybe towards the sky. Okay, brilliant. And then maybe, let's see, you might want to come back to centre, whether you're standing or seated. And maybe you want to try it on the opposite side. So maybe again, maybe you might want to try again, placing your knee on the side of the chair with your hand here, grounding, maybe lengthening through nice, strong, powerful leg. Feel that tactile sensation, maybe of your foot on the floor, maybe lifting your lower abs up towards your head, maybe lifting through the crown or maybe standing away. Or maybe coming to your seated position, whichever one feels available to you and choosing your hand position. Maybe wherever you are, you may want to notice how you root to rise. Maybe you want to call to mind the resilience and an image of a tree. When we're balancing and focusing on sensation, we're not thinking about the past and we're not worrying about the future. And then when you're ready, you may feel as though you want to arrive and come back to your um, centre, back to your seat or your standing position. So maybe now, maybe you're ready to move to the opposite side with your fists of fire. So when you come towards your opposite side with your fists of fire, your option, if you're coming onto your chair with your thigh, at the, maybe on the edge, maybe your knee on the block or your back leg straight, so that's one option, maybe square to the side, okay? Or maybe you want to do it standing, whichever is available for you. 
If you're feeling a little bit stressed today, maybe you might want to call to mind something that you want to throw behind you. So as you're coming into your empowered standing position or your empowered seated position, whichever is available to you, as you cross your arms in the opposite direction to what you did last time, don't worry if you nod, because I've forgotten as well. Maybe you want to drop that front knee over your front ankle. Maybe you want to lengthen out and feel that strength in the back leg. Maybe you want to link, lift through the crown of your head and lift your lower abs up towards you. And then when you feel ready, you may want to do breath and movement or you may just want to focus on the movement. So maybe inhale here and then ha, fists of fire, throwing everything behind you. Everything that's wound you up today, just throw it behind you. Inhale. Ha. Inhale. Straighten. Ha. Inhale. Ha. Inhale. Ha. Inhale. Ha. You can go as fast or as slow, or maybe you don't want to do it at all. Ha. And then when you feel as though that you've had enough of this movement, you may want to come back to your centre. Coming back to your centre in your position, coming back maybe to noticing whether standing or seated, noticing where you are in space, maybe noticing your feet, the contact between you and the chair. So maybe you want to just notice how you are and just check in. So just with curious attention, notice how your body feels now. Notice any sensations, heartbeat, the quality maybe of your breath. So maybe you might want to try to do a little bit of a hip stretch. So one option here is to straighten out one leg and place maybe the opposite leg with the ankle on top. Maybe that is enough and is available to you right now. So maybe you might alternatively, as another option, you might want to bend that bottom leg, maybe lifting through the crown of the head, lengthening maybe, lifting your lower abs maybe up towards your head. And maybe this is enough for you right here, right now. Or maybe you might want to try a little bit of a twist. Nice. Maybe you want to inhale to lengthen your spine. And maybe you might want to, on the exhale, twist towards that bent top leg. And maybe you might want to you hold the back of the chair as a guide as you lengthen through the crown of the head. And maybe you might notice some sensation in the outer hip and maybe you might notice some sensation in the spine, maybe in the neck, if that feels comfortable for you. And maybe you, as you come back towards centre, you might want to lift and lengthen before you exhale and twist back around to the front. You might want to stay here or maybe on the exhale, you might want to come into a little bit of a fold. So where your hip creases are, nice. Maybe you want to lift and lengthen on the inhale and with the exhale, leading with your heart centre maybe, if that feels available to you, maybe you want to see where you are and slightly come forward, just noticing any sensation maybe in the outer hip as you come into this stretch. So maybe you might notice. Remember, always remember where your edge is. Notice how far you want to go. And then when you feel available, when that's ready for you, you might want to inhale to come back towards centre to lift and lengthen. And maybe when you're ready, you might want to try on the opposite side. So. Maybe, okay, again, so you might want to straighten out the opposite leg this time and place maybe the ankle on top of the thigh. So maybe you might flex your foot, maybe you point your feet, but whichever feels available to you. So that's one option. Another option maybe is to straighten that bottom leg. It's nice, big. You might want to notice how the length of your spine, you might maybe want to lift through the crown of your spine. You might want to lift your lower abs up towards your spine. And maybe if that's available to you, you might want to inhale to lift and lengthen and maybe you want to exhale maybe on the twist towards that bent knee. Maybe you might hold onto the chair for a little bit of support. 
and when that feels available for you, when you feel ready to come back to centre, maybe you want to inhale to lift and lengthen to the crown of the head and exhale to twist back towards centre. So you may stay here or you may not, or maybe you want to come into a deeper hip stretch. So maybe you want to inhale to through the crown of the head, spine lifted, and maybe you might want to fold from your hip crease, leading with your heart centre. So you're coming into a little bit of a hip stretch, if that is what you would like to do. And then when you feel ready, when that feels available to you, you're welcome to come back to find your seat and find your centre position. Now, if, as we are always, I always like to sometimes finish on a twist a little bit, working with the spine on an energise or a little bit of a hip stretch. We're going to do a, this is an option for you, rest may be movement. For you, rest may be to leave the class now because sometimes rest can be a challenge, especially where there's no movement or silence. Um, or maybe rest for you, you might want to join in with this practice. So this um, rest position, if you want to stay with me, is an autogenic one. And it's one that you can practice yourself if you remember the process. And it's very useful if you can't sleep at night. Um, and it's also very useful to help you to de-stress. So you have options here to start the practice now, to carry on with some form of movement or to join in this autogenic, um, gentle stress release. Options to be seated. Another option if you've got yoga mats is you might want to be on your back with a blanket in the bolster underneath your knees, or you may want to turn the chair around if that's available to you and place your calves Place your back on the floor with your calves on the chair, maybe slightly propping up your hips, maybe. So whatever is available to you, I'm going to do this practice seated. The option for you, maybe you want your eyes closed or maybe you want your eyes open or you would like to have a soft gaze looking just maybe ahead of your feet. So with this autogenic practice i'm going to repeat some phrases three times okay so you may want to come to a relaxed position and be less worried about lengthening your spine or being more rigid so you may want to soften into the position so when you find your pose that you would like to use for this ending of this practice whether your eyes are open or closed Simply repeat inside of your mind the following phrases. My right arm is heavy. My right arm is heavy. My right arm is heavy. My left arm is heavy. My left arm is heavy. My left arm is heavy. My right leg is heavy. My right leg is heavy. My right leg is heavy. My left leg is heavy. My left leg is heavy. My left leg is heavy. My right arm is warm. My right arm is warm. My right arm is warm. My left arm is warm. My left arm is warm. My left arm is warm. 
My right leg is warm. My right leg is warm. My right leg is warm. My left leg is warm. My left leg is warm. My left leg is warm. My whole body is heavy and warm. My whole body is heavy and warm. My whole body is heavy and warm. My forehead is cool and clear. My forehead is cool and clear. My forehead is cool and clear. My heartbeat is calm and regular. My heartbeat is calm and regular. My heartbeat is calm and regular. I am at peace. I am at peace. I am at peace. The choice is now if you would like maybe want to stay in this practice just enjoying this sensation of wherever you are whether you're seated or laid on the floor but if you're ready to invite some form of movement to come out of this practice to finish the practice just start to become aware of sounds again Start to feel maybe the contact between your body and the floor. Maybe tickle the palate with your tongue. And you may want to gently invite some form of movement. Maybe you want to wiggle your fingers and toes. Maybe you want to stretch your body out. Maybe when that's available to you, if you're laid on the floor, maybe you want to push yourself up slowly to a nice seated position. If you're sat on a chair, maybe you might want to gently lift your gaze, maybe and just look around, just take in the place, the position of your body, noticing where you are in space, noticing the quality of the light, and just to finish off the practice just as a note of gratitude to yourself just mentally thank yourself for taking some time out of this practice today taking the time out to focus on your well-being and gratitude for looking after your body and mind and your spirit